I've never met this man, but he entered my living room in 2015 via an HBO show called Ballers. As the character Reggie, best friend of Pro Bowl football player Vernon Littlefield, he portrays a convincing, self-entitled bleep hole trying to get a piece of his pie. He is an adversary to Dwayne Johnson sports agent Spencer Strassmore, and in real life, a talented comedian fresh from the Just for Last Festival in Montreal. London Brown, welcome to the Cabbie Presents podcast. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate being here, man. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Was that your first time in Montreal? It was my first time, man. It was it was good, man. What's cool about Canada is I realized that the people there's like good energy. You know, that's good uh, to hear. I, it, it might have something to do with that that healthcare, because uh, <laughs> people in the states grumpy. You know, <laughs> I, the healthcare is so good, it, it's so great here. I I was trying to I was looking for ways to hurt myself to possibly just get patched up. I was like, <laughs> free healthcare is incredible, man. In fact, the, not even joking. I just got a bill. I I was in I was in New York for for Men's Fashion Week, and I had like my finger had swelled up or something, so I was told to go see a dermatologist. I go, I make the appointment to go see the dermatologist, and then while I was there, uh, long story short, the, the girl at the reception was like, "Yo, it's not worth it. Just go down the street and go get you some Neosporin or something." I was like, "All right," and I still got billed two seventy five. That's Ooh. how crazy. That's how crazy we are in the states. I never spoke to the doctor. Oh, really? That was just I sitting never in the waiting seen room. The doctor. I walked into the lobby, seen the receptionist. I was like, "Yo, y'all know about this kind of thing that happened?" She's like, "Um, just go get you some needles for and a little <laughs> um, band aid. You're gonna be good." I was like, "Yo, thank you, man. I appreciate that." And I got a bill yesterday at 10 p.m. My sister sent me the text of for two seventy five. What? One question about that. Was the receptionist Tiffany Haddish? Because she was all one of the... Uh, <laughs> no, but major shout out to Tiffany Haddish. I just I just saw Tiffany Haddish the other night. I uh, heard Dave Chappelle and oh, uh, Lil Real, Darnell, uh, Darnell Rollins. Yeah, we was, uh, we, you know, of course we did Just for Laughs. So I just was with Tiffany Haddish. Shout They're out to all Haddish. in Just for Laughs? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sick. So how many, how many days did you spend in Montreal? I was there about maybe, f- I think, four or five, four days. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah so we, we, uh, we happened to catch... We, uh, Saw them for a quick second, just said hey to them, and uh, Jonas was over there, and it was a couple. I mean, hey, man, it went down, man. How was the so as your, um, you know, your it's your first time uh, at Just for Laughs, and it's probably in the top five or top ten most famous things that Canada is known for. That you know, it's hockey, yeah, us being nice. There's like you know our entertainers and our, but Just for Laughs is like a massive comedy oh, festival, and your material on stage. Um, is it? Are you one of those like super observational comics? Or are you just telling a lot of stories from your life? Or are you like? Do you have like political humor or satirical? Humor? I wish I was there in Montreal. Right, so right, I, right. I had the answers to these questions, but um, sort of thematically or or as far as topics go, what do you touch on? Uh, I and how much time bit, did you have on on stage? Uh, when you do just for last, you give about like eight minutes. Okay. Because it's, re- it's first of all, it's, it's a very um, it's like a major massive showcase ultimately, and it's like in in an inductee into being a comedian, I guess, if you will. Um, a rite of passage almost? Right, right. It's just one of, it's a nice step as a comic. Just all the greats from the Kevins to the Chappelle's to the Chris Rocks and you know, have done it. So up there we do about eight minutes. So really you gotta get in there, make your point, get in and out and keep it nice and tight. So um for this just for the last festival I did everything from talking away uh, talking about how uh, white guys dress versus the way black guys dress. Which is kind uh, of the same now, isn't it? It's an interesting thing. Well, this is my my thing, is that black guys, we're held to a totally different standard when it comes to dressing. Like, I get white people that come up to me and say, bro, um, I really like the way uh, you dress, man, and how you, like, coordinate. <laughs> so, like, why do black guys, like, match, bro? And I have to tell them, <laughs> it's very simple, because black guys are held to a totally different standard. Like, a white dude can come here right now with a torn shirt, Rip jeans, flip flops, and be like, oh, he must be in a band. Right. Now, let me, you come here with a torn shirt, rip jeans, flip flops, be like, ah, this dude unemployed. Like, it's different. We gotta look, <laughs> we gotta be put together, man. It ain't an accident that you got a nice button down shirt. I got on some blue. We clean, man. But, so I talk about that to uh, uh, how I draw. I'm a laid back guy, but I tend to draw really aggressive women. Oh, wow. Because um, the, the difference in the energies. The energy. I'm, I'm real laid back. I don't. You know, I'm, I like to fill people out and see what's going on in general. But, you know, I get women, they, they are aggressive. They want to know what's <laughs> happening. And then also the difference between, like, dating. I've dated uh, older women before versus younger and just the difference in 
how they give gifts. Like young younger girls, they give you a gift. And I, I remember one year this girl gave me a gift. It had like candy and like a DVD and some cologne, which was nice. Yeah, that's nice. But an older woman gave me stuff I needed. <laughs> She gave me like icy hot. Did um, she give you health insurance? She gave me like icy hot. Um, you know, um, some vodka and like some transmission fluid. I was like, thank you. That was cool. I was like, she gets it. Well, grown women, you know, no knock to younger women, but grown women they just move differently. They make you something to eat, you know, when you're there. <laughs> Look, I wish I was there. I would. I would have been like, yes. You know, what? I just the, just this weekend, I had someone tell me I had some women will Google men. Like when they're like finding a mate or like they're dating, wow. like though you you've never been told that you've been Googled before. I try, man. I try to be very, very easy going, very clandestine. When okay, well, with, you can't escape Google, my brother. Like, I can't. As soon as you like, tell them your name, that's like like whenever. I didn't know. I didn't know that was a thing though. Dude, women Google men, and I've never. Uh, all my boys are like other guys I've met. Right. Have you ever Googled? I've never a, Googled one. No, but women do that. So they want to know everything, bro. Like they want to know your your full story and and things about you and stuff that you may never, you know, you, you said, I'm a little more cl- clandestine. Right. But they just want to go deep. Like, they'll that do a might, deep dive on you, man. That might explain when I've, when I've gone out uh, uh, out to eat or something, when they know I like Mexican food, and that's one of the things. I'm like, man, I, do, I love Mexican food. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, they all of them like Mexican like, I like black. I like what? I'm like, this is why. Okay, now I know. And the, I also, didn't know they did. That yeah, was a bro, thing. I'm telling you, man. I learned that a long time ago, but it was reconfirmed this weekend when I was out. And I was what? like, you guys do that? And also, like, I don't know if you do this, but, you know, when you go on the gram and you obviously you see the person's right. profile and you got to go to the tag photos because there's a difference between what they Ooh. put out and what, like, the world puts out. You ain't you, never lied about that. That's the truth. Yeah, tag photos, bro. That's that's where you go. That's to collect the them. truth. <laughs> yes. I, know, I definitely know that. The, they, the, the, the tag or whoever, the, yeah, them, them, those photos over there. Those, those are the ones you really got to look at. That's funny. Maybe that's why, how they, they, they saw that you knew, uh, that you like Mexican food of, of, Maybe. of the things that they I, discovered. I, I never thought, that's some good, I got I to gotta add these things to my notes, man, I didn't know. You are an L.A. dude, and uh, you're from South Central. When you were growing up, did you have to pick a color, red or blue, or, or were you always mindful, like, where you were in the city like, oh, I'm just going to wear green. I'm just going to stick to, like, neutral color. Oh, Gray, yeah. it black. It definitely is a thing. It's, White. It's, it's cultural in that, for example, I didn't start wearing red until I was in my 20s. And you're not necessarily told not to. You just kind of, it's just a part, it's just part of, it's a product of the environment. And so it becomes a proclivity to just kind of just know how to map out the city and that kind of thing. And so, uh, yeah, I grew up around uh, Crips. I stayed next door to some Crips. And five houses down from another set of cribs and walking to school was different turfs and, and gangs. So it's just one of those things where you just kind of know, even to this day, you know, uh, people still have to be careful of every every baseball had means some Something. sort of game. Oh, wow. Um, and so it's not as crazy now because just in general, I'm not just hanging out in the streets. Of course not. You know, so not. it's just my environment is, is different, but I still associate myself with the hood when I go back to, let's say, if I want to buy a white T-shirt or something, or when I do community work. You know, I go back, I speak at juvenile halls, uh, speak to, you know, middle school and high school kids, and so I'm always around it. But um, so that's but that's part of the reason I go back, is to let them know, like, listen, I come from the same environment y'all grew up in, you don't have to be, you know, involved in this kind of street life but there's some other stuff you know you can get out i was just um uh speaking with ice cube a couple days ago so that's what that's why it's top of mind because when ice cube was nwa they made every all the la hats super cool raiders la kings absolutely dodgers and they were just black like black with the white logos absolutely no colors but i was you know they made they made those caps more famous than any of the players that maybe bo jackson but right right right. but that's 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 how hip-hop drives that kind of stuff when it comes to sports it's one of those things where absolutely those those hats that's that's all a part of that that branding thing where hip hop really does like you, you're right NWA they kept that black and white classic black and white and that's what it was. As an LA dude, how uh, are you surprised that both of the murals dedicated to LeBron James were defaced by fans because Los Angeles has 7.5 billion Kobe stands? Yeah. Or are yeah. you surprised that like the, even just the, the even the last one? I don't know if you saw this, right, but right. where he's just looking at sort of like the Mount Rushmore of right, right. of L.A. greats, and even that one got defaced. Have uh, you seen this on on, on Instagram? I, was, I didn't know they defaced 
the last one that you yeah, talked about. Yeah, bro, they did. Um, what I realized is that some people, I don't know if those are real Laker fans. Because Laker fans, we're, we're really dire Laker fans. But, again, the Cavs were never, like, our opposing team. That wasn't who we, we – if it was Celtics, it would be a little different. But, like, LeBron, you got to give it up. LeBron took took them to the finals, like, four times. He did all he can do there. I have no in hate Cleveland. to – In Cleveland. I have nothing – but love for LeBron, LeBron. Well, is, yeah, because he's with your team now. But listen, though, even then, I, I, <laughs> was, of course. I thought he was great over there. I just feel like he came in. He said, "Yo," he didn't say, "I'm trying to be the king of LA." He, he said, "Yo, I'm gonna be the first guy in the locker room, last one out." Boom. And I even liked how how the staff said it for the Lakers, just like, "Yo, we're not celebrating because we signed someone. Yo, we got we got work to do." And I think it's just as simple as that. Which is, yo, let's see what work he produces. Other than that. All that negative energy, I'm like, yo, relax, dude. I mean, I get it. If you're from LA, we know that Kobe is the is a staple. He's at he sits in that seat. No one's taking that. No, we don't plan on replacing anybody with that seat. It's Kobe's. He's gone. Whatever. It's Kobe's. So right now, we just like. We like all right, uh, LeBron. All right, we, we you good over <laughs> you there? You guys are way more excited than just super chill. Even though you're, let it, even though maybe you're a super chill, chill guy, I'm but, chill. Maybe but that's yo, it. when that when that news broke, you were like, ah, you must have I, been. Even the guys as chill as you, like you guys got LeBron. We now, got bro. LeBron, but until again, until we win, it's just like you know, because we, we wouldn't, we definitely wouldn't want LeBron to do what he did and just take us. So far, hopefully, like I said, I know it may take a year or two to get the chemistry right, but hey, we, we I mean, I'm excited. I mean, it, it's definitely going to bring some energy. I haven't really, the, the Lakers, watching the Lakers game since Kobe left was kind of like, ah, it's like watching like black and white TV. You can do it. <laughs> it's like, ah, it's like if you ordered a meal, you ordered a hamburger and you say, yo, I want it with cheese and they bring it without, you can do it. <laughs> It's like you yo, eat it, but you may not en- you might not enjoy right. it. So to it's the just, you know, so I'm excited to have him over there though. It's Speaking good. of which, um, I've had this conversation many times with LA dudes. That what is the go to burger spot? I'm a Canadian, obviously. We're here in Toronto, so we f with In and Out Burger. That is the truth to right. us. But we have a different taste palette. Is your is your like? Are you on the Shake Shack or like Father's Office Plan Check? Are you a f- Five guys got, even right, though you're right. very slender, I don't even know how many times you eat burgers. <laughs> right. Because, uh, you know, you, you, may not, you, might, you might be on that Dwayne Johnson friggin' I just fish to, and cherry tomatoes diet. Uh, I, do, I, try to, I try to gym very often, but, I mean, in, in L.A., in and out definitely the line is always crazy. Dude, it's um, 50 deep at any time yeah, of day. Yeah, it's always, always. But, I mean, it just really depends, man, because sometimes, man, in L.A., we do, we still, I still like hole-in-the-wall spots, like, a spot, there's a spot called Tam's, or even there's a, another spot called Tommy's, where it's like a chili cheeseburger kind of spot. I'm good. I'm, I'd be good with that. Uh, but in and out, definitely, the, the line is always crazy. Have always you, crazy. Have you been to, speaking of like mom and pop hole in the wall place, have you been to Apple Pan? Nah. There's a place called Apple Pan where they just do not care about you. Like really? the disrespect is almost part of the charm of the place. Really? Like, I, what do you want? Like, that's, that's like, the energy. I, what do you want? And then you get, you know, you get a, it's delicious, right. but you, it's also, you're kind of, the disrespect is part of the experience, so maybe that's why I, I enjoyed it. You know but, what, I can, you know what, I can put up with a, a, a unprofessional attitude if the if the meal is cool. I can't tell you what the tip gonna be, <laughs> but, uh, you know, if, if you're gonna have a, see, I had breakfast the other morning, and I just kind of felt like the guy didn't really, I'm like, listen, this is my whole thing. If you got a job that's going to have to deal with customer service or dealing with people and it takes some hospitality to do it, if you're not made for that, then really think, consider thinking about something else. <laughs> it's not my fault that they booked you another shift. It's not my <laughs> fault that, they, that, that the smoothie machine is broke and you have to explain it to everyone. Oh. Hey, I just want to come in. I want my meal. It's the same way on set. They don't care if I had... I went to a party last night. If I was, if let's just say my, I was in a relationship and I broke up. Hey, when they say action, have the lines down. Be, 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 hit my marks. That's it. Nobody cares about all that other stuff. I want to get to ballers in just a second, but you just made me think of something and I, that I saw in Seinfeld's Comedian in Cars. Because you have more visibility now, because being on uh-huh. HBO's Ballers, do you, 
Do you leave a Hollywood tip if they recognize you, or do you just leave your regular tip if they if they <laughs> That's don't? Funny. Um, I'm actually a pretty I'm a pretty decent tip tipper. Because by, listen, by, we have the uh, we have the reputation we're we terrible have. terrible tippers, and that's why for me I I'm cool. I'm I'm gonna go out of my way to make sure you look out for me. I look out for you. And major shout out to Chris Tucker. That's one one of those things I used to always see him do when we would tour together. Is that he would make sure he always tipped. And so not that I learned it from him, but he just reinforced the idea that it's always good to do it. And so I try to keep change on me to do it. I have no problem tipping. I'm looking for forward to i anticipate trying to do for others but again but what, london what kind of tip though are no, you like, I, I'm a, I, I, this is what i use i usually do 20 percent. okay uh if they 20 percent is kind of like usually the standard if they you know are really if they do some stuff without me asking like the glasses never dry look man listen go in fact you do that, man, and, 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 and buy yourself some breakfast afterward. <laughs> I try to be cool, but that's why it bugs me when the service isn't right. I because sometimes I'll be sitting down with somebody, be like, "Yo, they didn't bring the straw, they didn't bring this, they didn't bring that." I say, "Yo, now this is where the tip goes," and it bugs me because black people have a reputation of not being good tippers. Yep. So I hate to not tip well, right. but when they give me, this it stereotype. reinforces this because yeah, yeah. I know that when they see the bill, like. Oh my gosh, he didn't tip. He <laughs> he only left the two dollars for the tip, and I get the bill was forty dollars. But I'm like, yo, I'm re- I'm reactionary. Did you you didn't bring the, this? You forgot that? I told you because I'm very idiosyncratic about my food. So I said, yo, please don't don't put these kind of beans. I prefer these <laughs> ones. Or this kind I don't of want any of the food touching. I need a I need a an equator between each. Yo, uh, but I, but the, the flip side because I, I believe in balance is that I'm gonna tip you. I got you. <laughs> What annoys me too is when you go to a restaurant, and then you get the people who just are a- above the pad and pen. I'm like, okay, now if you're gonna take my order without a pad and pen, it better be right. <laughs> if not, listen, put the pride down, whip out the pen. I'm not gonna think you're any less intelligent or good at what you do. I'd rather you use the pen and pad, and it be right than to be prideful. And and not and it'd be wrong. And then it reflects in the bill. There you go. A friend of mine uh, named Darren Rose. He right now he's writing on a show with Damon Wayans Jr. But he oh shout out to Damon Wayans. Yeah yeah yeah. He who was a very funny dude. Uh, and so was my friend Darren. But he was he was uh, acting on a show for about eight or ten years here mm-hmm. in Canada. And he said at the end of the season he takes all his wardrobe. And he and he brings it home and like whatever he doesn't want, he just gives it to his parent, his brother, his dad, his friends, or whatever. Suits everything. So you wear some pretty dope gear on on ballers. Do you get to keep the wardrobe? I saw you had a couple come de garçon shirts or maybe one. Right, I was like, right. I had that shirt. Uh, I think you had. Did you have a a, a Givenchy shirt? Anyway, yeah. my, my point is, mm-hmm. do you get to, do you get to or do you just take the wardrobe at the end of the season? No, it's usually. I've been trying to get a couple things. But it, it's not as easy. Was your was your boy when, if your boy was maybe the star on the other show? Uh, no, he was he was um, not a reoccur, but he was um, a cast member, like a, a a series regular. See, I'm on this show like this. And I I try to get a couple things. There's a couple pieces I say, yo, I would like this and that. I got a call. I got a call. Shout out to Tiffany. Uh, she's a stylist for the show. I got to call her and see if I can get some stuff because I definitely want some stuff. I try to be cool and I don't take anything. And I just l- l- let it be because I'm still trying to come back for the next season. Season five. I'm on my best first first two whatever uh, these, these seasons up until now. I don't. I'm not demanding. I don't ask for anything because we also can get branded with the whole thing of like, man, uh, London things are getting to your head now. I'm not that guy. Okay. I'm not asking for anything now. <clears throat> season five. <laughs> I must have a gym inside my room. <laughs> I'm going to have an accent and everything when I get on set. <laughs> no, nah, man, but I try to be cool, but there, I, I am going to try to talk to him because there are some stuff that I'm like, yo, I would really like. And I like the stuff that, that John David. Uh, oh, yeah, Dan, uh, John, yeah, J.D. Yeah. wears. Yeah, J.D. I'm Washington. Like, yo, because he's a, he's a star athlete on within, within the show. So his wardrobe is totally. I've seen him with some. They had some socks on this dude. That caused a, some. Some hundreds for just socks, socks, man. Woo. So I'm like, yo, I think I could let let uh, let Linda leave with a couple things. Man. <laughs> you mentioned the gym, and it's, uh, I guess it's rumored, or or actually, no, I've seen photos of when when The Rock or when Dwayne Johnson goes to do like these big movies, and when he's on on location, they right. build him a set. Right. What is the 
what is the is there an expectation or a, or a competition level amongst the actors to work out every day or when you're on uh, when you have some downtime? Like no, is his it, his, it, his in sorry is his influence felt in that way? Um, I don't think so. I think I don't know. I mean, I think people try to work out, but for the most part, it may not be everybody. I know for me, it's something because I'm I live in anticipation in the in the sense that. I know that something is on the way. So I don't have time to be trying to get fit. It's just better if I just start working on trying to get fit now. But he's so in shape that you feel, you almost feel bad if you, you, you he's so in shape. If you're eating poorly, <laughs> you get the guilty sometimes. You're like, I really shouldn't eat this eighth bag of chips. Like, <laughs> but Dwayne, Dwayne, you know, he's a really cool guy. So, But everybody... Kind of has their own little thing that they do. I remember one time on set, uh, shout out to my boy Donovan Carter. We, we Who plays he, Vernon. He plays in the Vernon show. on the show. We had a scene, uh, season two, where he we had he had to be in the pool because he was for training. And I seen him off to the side doing push ups two minutes before they call <laughs> action. I'm like, we already here. This is. <laughs> I see what you're doing. I appreciate the effort, but this is it. This is the show. And that's why I said, man, let me just try to stay in the gym year round because I never know. Like the first season, they wanted to like put me in a tank top or something. I'm like, yo, hold on. I'm not ready. I don't want to look sick uh, in the tank top. And let me, let me get my body right first. <laughs> season two, I'll kind of lift, you know, start working out a little bit. But, you know, you got to be ready for that stuff, man. That's, but that's part of Dwayne's brand. That's why he, he – in San Andreas, we believe that his helicopter could crash <laughs> – into a department store, and the most he did was like, he like brushed off his shoulders. We believed it because he's in shape. Right. If you listen, if you were stuck anywhere, Dwayne is the guy you would like come pushing through the gravel to save you. Yeah, we believe, and I, I think that you know being in shape or at least trying to be healthy is good overall for your focus. I haven't seen Skyscraper, but in the movie, if there's a scene where he like starts kicking the building and it topples over, you believe that we he can kick down the building. That yeah. it's Dwayne. What what? It's the way we believe <laughs> that he can scale a skyscraper with no rope, just his hands and drive. We like that's the way swimming underwater for th- 20 minutes, no snorkel kit, just because yeah. he's the way he's the rock. How um how tricky was it to navigate some of those party scenes on Ballers? Where like, I mean, you guys first two seasons was Miami, next two seasons were in LA, right? Right, right. And was it season two had the big boat party? Yeah, uh, that was season that was season one or season one. Yeah, yeah. So you're there with a bunch of extras, and there's some bad ones. And uh, we, you were you guys yeah. weren't yeah yeah. So then yeah, I mean you guys were probably shooting for uh, like a full day probably because there's a bunch yeah. of dialogue, Actually, a bunch of that, different that, setups. That that, see, that was uh, ep- season one episode three. We shot that for it took us a week. And that's how you whatever you say. Uh, whatever you say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hey, um, I brought some of your biggest fans, Vern. Uh, you remember Sarah? Hey. This is Chloe. Hello. Tisha. Hello. And uh, this is Bree. Like the cheese. Like the cheese. Hey, ladies. Hi. It's always nice to meet new fans. Nice to meet you. Hey, hey, Joe, Joe. Your yacht is amazing. Thank you. You should see my other yacht. And that boast that we did, like... How many times did you fall in love? You know what? Couple. No, I'm going to tell you why. Couple times. I'm going to tell you why. It'd be... Why you did or did not fall in love? Did not. Okay. Because that was season one. So part of it was girls, are di- they act different when they don't know you. <laughs> they act different when they don't know you. So see, even, for example, when we go out someplace or anywhere, it was security as a... Uh, behind the line, sir. Get back. Just stand over there behind the line. <laughs> the girls are the same way. Like, I remember, this is how cool I am, right? And not to be self agonizing, but just to let you know how chill I am. When I'm on set every day, I speak to everybody, handshake everybody. I remember I was this line, this particular day was like a, a lot of extras on set for this scene. And I go by and I shake, shake hands. And this girl was like, um, I have a guy. I was like, oh, oh okay. Wow. Right? Okay. And then I guess word that got around, like, oh, that's the dude. He's on the show. She came. This is how fast. About two minutes later, she came back. Oh, hi. I didn't really know you were on the show. <laughs> um, that's my resume. I've been working really you hard. You lie. Resume out, headshot. What? The whole thing. But that's how 
that's how fickle people are, man. And and on the surface of things, where I'm saying that to say that when we shot that those scenes, you, you know, one sometimes people don't even want to talk to you, and you know what I mean. And they they act they're all in like the clickish. I'm like, yo, I'm not trying to flirt with you. I'm just trying to be polite. And then of course things kind of change after you know the show. But so then you did fall in love. No. <laughs> What Snoop say? I don't love him. I don't love him, man. That's, yeah, he did say that's that. the yes, truth, yes. man. I don't, man. But I, I, try, I try to just stay chill. I don't. Just go back to my joke, man. I don't like I said. I don't. I don't be chasing. I don't be chasing women or trying to do that because I don't feel like. I feel like everything should just happen. And should be organic. Uh, so I'm not the guy at the, at the end of the night at the club. Hey, what's happening? You know what I'm saying? What's good? <laughs> my car over. I'm not. I ain't doing none of that. I just feel like yo, you cool. Yeah, because cool. you're pretty, dude. You, you you can afford to just kind of lay back. The rest of us, man, we got we're grinding. We try no, to get, try to get you know seven rebounds, five assists. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> dude, zero dude. points for seven rebounds. We're trying to be <laughs> trying to get on the stat sheet somehow, bit, my dude. Um, there was um, I remember seeing in uh, the Gary Shandling documentary that there were these famous or infamous basketball games, these pickup games at his house. Other comedians right. would go. Sandler, um, uh, Judd Apatow, right. whatever. Is there is there a version of that that exists that you like within the either the comedy community or the acting community that there are these like there are these like yeah. pickup games? I've heard that there are like card games, right? But are there like pickup basketball games? There are some. There are some games um, I've been invited to that they do with with some of the comics and um, they'll line up and do them. It just depends. Like sometimes for me, that's. I'd rather just do some other things. And I sometimes just, and, and that's not to be antisocial, but I, I think at times I can definitely be an introvert. And where for me, I just like, I like being home. Uh, okay. Because my lifestyle, my lifestyle is out. This is another thing, I, I, going into that as far as a pickup game, not to go off, but a lot of times people think that, <clears throat> like a trip like this, I've, I've been out here a couple of weeks, and I think a lot of times people feel like, I'm just out here chilling, like because I'm out, I'm not home. It's girls, it's drinking, it's clubbing, it's partying, it's partying, and they don't understand. It's really not like that, and and nor does it have to be because I what I'm doing is what I love to do. So it incorporates everything. I like to travel. I get to do that as a, an actor and, and comedian. Uh, I like getting invited to and getting free gifts and free clothes and stuff. <laughs> All that. It comes with what I do. So for me, when I get away, it's not like all of a sudden because I'm not home. Now I have to like do something fun and exciting and turn up all the way to the max. What I do is fun, turn up and exciting to the max. So my life, this is what I do is this all the time. So as far as going out or doing those kind of pickup games, I may go and support. But really, I I rather just kind of sometimes be home. Does that mean that you can't hoop? No, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> but that would have been an indirect way of saying, "Oh yeah, I, I don't play. I don't play ball. I don't, you know." Jamie Foxx has a has a basketball court at his house, so I'm, I, you know, and I know he likes to host people. So I'm sure at some point when you get the invite, you're like, you know exactly. what? This time, all right, let me that's let me just go run a little sum on the wing. And that's and that's what's happening. Just as my career grows and exposure happens, the invites start to change. You know, right, at, you right. know, at first I used to be, you know, just invited to a couple backyard picnics. And then it be it goes to Emmy events, and then it's that event or this private thing. So it's just exposure, man. It's just a matter of once people get to to know that I'm cool and I'm chill. They're like, yo, man, come sit in. Can you give us a story? Uh, perhaps your favorite story to tell. I've seen the the sneeze one, which is great, but perhaps another story that you enjoy telling from from one of your experiences or one of these moments that you've had in the four seasons working on Ballers. Um, I think that. Let me see. I had to go. I did a bit of a deep dive, and the, the. I mean, you're wearing sunglasses, so you can't really recreate it. But the thing about uh, the Rock sneezing with his eyes open, which was very funny. You're Dwayne. Dwayne. Dwayne is. Cool. You know, when I first met Dwayne, I was a fan of Dwayne just from wrestling, of course, because I grew up in the '80s. So, our era of of the wrestling hero was um, Hulk Hogan. It was that. Was, it was his thing, and then Dwayne just came in. And like brought a whole new temperature right. to wrestling. It's so, almost he like he amped it up from like Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was right. pretty high. It's exactly, like, exactly. He like went up one notch. He just he just has this thing. So I was a fan then, and from then, and then when I had a chance to sit down with him at the table read, um, I was trying to be as professional as I could be. <laughs> 
Did you lower your voice like that too? I tried. Yeah, I kept it real cool because Dwayne was there. So, uh, <laughs> hey, London, how are you? I was like, I was like, uh, hey, man, how's it going, man? You, you nice, uh, nice working with you. Ready for the table read? I say, yeah, I'm ready, man. All right. And uh, I did some little small talk with him. That was the outside. I was, you know, I'm Dwayne. He act. I'm acting. With, you know, hey. But on the inside, I was like, there go Dwayne. <laughs> like, I've been waiting to meet you. I want a photo. I want to hug you. I'm a fan. Take one from my mom. I was just I was trying to be cool, man, because it was Dwayne. I, I, want, I want my job. I want to be professional. So I never bugged him. So then with that, I remember I wanted a photo. I was like, man, I want a photo. Ooh, I want to ask tricky him. one, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it it's a lot. And then one day he said, uh, he called me like I was across the ring from London. Get over here. I was like, yeah. You know, I got over there. Jump in this photo. I was like, all right. And I was trying to be cool. But again, I was like, ooh. <laughs> wait till I'll stun on my friends with this one. I was excited, man. And he was cool. But it was cool because he invited it. It's different. This, is, this goes back to my Instagram. This is why on my Instagram, when I run to people who watch the show, and they say, hey, man, I offer, I say, you want to take a photo or you want, because I know that feeling. I'm not removed from that. I understand sometimes people just want to simply be acknowledged. So as best I can, as often as I can, anytime people want a photo or anything, because people don't even have to talk to me. So I'm, great, I'm grateful enough that people even want to just acknowledge me. Uh, well, then, it, it means two ways, because sometimes people have wanted to fight me. What? Before. Absolutely. Oh, because of your character? Because of Reggie? Because of, of Reggie. I was in a club one night and I was, uh, my, I was for some kind of regular club event, and this guy was staring me down. Looked like he just got out of jail two hours ago. Oh lord! <laughs> so he staring me down, six five something tall. He walked over. Hey man, um, uh, I was staring you down. I thought you was a dude who stole my girl. I was trying to figure out why I didn't like you. Then I realized you were the dude on the show. Hey, good work, good work, man. You want a drink? And I was like, <laughs> thank you. You were like, inside. You're like, ah! But I know because cool, he man. walked straight up. He had he was on me. He was serious too. And I was like, man, dude, no, nah, I, I never. I'm just. But it, every it, your stories, are, you know, stories are different, man. So it's cool that people, like I said, I try to be very gracious in that way. I love that, uh, and I, I know you got to go. So I want to kind of get out, get out on one of these two impressions that I've seen you do. Either and you choose whether we can role play a, a Denzel because I just saw Equalizer two. Uh, have you seen Equalizer two? I forgot it was coming out. When did it come? Yo, Equalizer two came out like two weeks ago. Oh, probably because I just tra- traveling. I, right, you I had must, you. I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to go see that. Oh, it's and it's like it's not peak Denzel, like in uh, right, right, right. Like I guess Training Day is right, like right. peak Denzel. Right, this right, is, right. It's it's still like because he's his character's a little more subdued, but he's still got his the looks and yeah, whatever. And, yeah. and, and you have the it's like you you know uh, when they, when people do impressions, they focus on one part of the right and then amplify that one part. And I, right. yours is like the voice. And yeah. it's a little bit. It's like that head tilt you do a little bit. It's a. You know what? The, and this goes back to and my. And it's the double thing that you do. It's the right. And some, for me, because I, I come from theater, so as actors, we kind of learn to embody. And so when it's time to embody, it can be a um, you know head shake. It can be a head tilt. <laughs> it can be the fact that I'm pointing with my knuckle and not my full <laughs> finger. Um, I just make reference to it's. It's um, it's all kind of <laughs> boom. It's all kind of things. It's the whisper saying things twice. I said saying things twice. It, it so it, 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 <laughs> uh, it depends, man. Denzel's the king, man. That's, or or fences. Fences is like peak Denzel. Like that's peak. you get ninety minutes of like him and Viola. Viola had the ugly cry. Ooh, I, I was forgot that monologue. Oh yeah, but he, that's that's <laughs> that's. Peak I Denzel. forgot there was a monologue he used to do with that scene. I've been standing next to you the whole time, Rose. I think that was man. That's right. That's he's right. He's the king, man. Yeah, man. Uh, he's the king. I, I need to, I need to get out to see you uh, on stage live because I'm sure eight minutes just isn't enough, and this right, like, right, right. is enough. Uh, you have a fan here, London. I appreciate this has it, been, brother. Uh, uh, pleasure speaking with you. So, um, season four of Baller starts August 12th. August 12th, man. Here at uh, HBO in Canada, HBO in the United States. So check it out, and um, hopefully there's a season five. And hopefully, do, I wait, got- do you get do you get uh, Toss around like do you and The Rock come to? Can you get a, a give us a preview of how? Well, are you guys been, still adversarial. A little bit, um, in the sense where it's not as crazy as it was season one. Which I, I, I got to tell HBO, I think the the fans of the show definitely enjoy watching this black guy from LA <laughs> curse Spencer out, you know, and go at it. I think people like the conflict. But what they're trying to do, fortunately for me as an actor, they're trying to mature Reggie. Okay, so he's making some more business 
savvy moves and having more of a voice and really tr- trying to be uh, not as selfish as he was maybe season one. And so he's, he's – but they still kind of go at it. They still okay, curse it. each other out a little bit. Uh, but at the same time, it's going to be new to me like it's new to you guys because we shoot out a sequence. So I don't know really what's going on. I don't get – I haven't seen anything yet. Um, so I don't really know what all is happening besides some really cool – uh, guest appearances and all the guests who've been on the show have always been really cool. No, no attitudes, no egos on set. Everybody's chill. It's it's a really dope environment. But uh, we'll see Reggie maturing. Okay, I won't ask you for any of the uh, cameos because I'll let it be a surprise. Oh, <clears throat> Excuse me uh, for the for the rest of us like we'll have to experience on Sunday nights. Yes. London Brown on uh, Instagram. It's the the. Um, at Real London Brown. At Real London yes, Brown. Yes, yes. You can follow Thank his you. adventures. And you're also very you're very kind to your fans where you, you post like interactions and stuff like that. I and trust also you, man. Uh, you you have some knowledge to, to give too, so check him out. Real London Brown and also HBO on Sundays, Ballers. Thank you for coming on the Cabby Presents podcast. Thank you, man. I appreciate you.